Coming up, we're going to talk all about ad mob mediation and why it's so crucial to add to your monetization stack. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. And today we're going to talk all about ad mediation. We're going to break it down, talk about what it's all about, and then how you can really maximize it to make more revenues from your ad. And joining me, as always, my expert when it comes to all things ad mob is Sid Gupta. He is the CEO and co-founder of App Broda. Go check him out. It is appbroda.com. Sid, welcome back. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. All right, Sid, let's break it down. Let's first talk about, for those who aren't familiar with mediation, what is ad mediation? Ad mediation, to simply put, uh, is about competition building. Essentially, if you think about it, you're selling ad spaces, right? Ad spaces are also a function of supply and demand. If you have a certain amount of spaces to sell or a certain amount of products uh, to sell, you essentially want to increase the brand value that you have. Now, when you're only working with one demand source, for example, AdMob, you're basically saying this is the ad space available. Uh, whatever price you have, I'm more than happy to take it. But mediation is about adding more players into the mix and saying, guys, I've got more people in the bidding stack. Help me increase the competition. Who's going to bid higher? That's what mediation is all about. Increasing competition for your inventory and making it more brand valuable. That's the idea. I said, now talk to me about where you see mediation headed to. Where we've been and now we're, where are we headed? When you're starting mediation, the most important aspect is first setting up a baseline. It's very important to understand your historical data and set up a baseline. Now, when you're setting up a baseline, you've got to keep three parameters in mind. Uh, the format, the devices, the geo. Each format, each device, and each geo might have a very different strategy. Let me take an example. Let's talk about geo. Let's say you have users in multiple countries. One of them is the United States. Now, we need to call up United States. App Lovin uh, or Iron Source or Inmobi becomes a really important partner. But the same partner, when it comes to India, might not have the same amount of demand. So geography plays an extremely important part. Uh, let's talk about format. If you've got rewarded video, one of the very good formats that does very well, uh, has high CPMs in rewarded video is Unity. Let's talk about devices. Each device types has different sort of user uh, identification to it. So when you segment it, you're basically helping the, u helping the advertiser identify a certain kind of users, a certain price point of users. So always set up a baseline. Always understand your users by format, by device, by geo. Here, your analytics kicks in, and this is going to be a really important part where you build up a team, you set up uh, your Firebase, you get your data in place, understand each aspect and segment your audiences to understand what works. Once you figure out your format, devices, and geos, you will basically have clusters of audiences. Now, the next step that you need to do is to, is to go out to partners. Make a list of all the partners that you think are most relevant to you. Go out to them, talk to them, tell them about the kind of inventory you have, and they will come back to you and tell you where they have the most amount of demand. Get this in place, get your stack ready, and this is the first thing you've got to do. So once you've got the historical baseline in place, uh, understand the history of it, because that's how you'll understand how mediation has worked. Historically, the oldest method of mediation is waterfall. Waterfall means that you have multiple layers of ad, ad networks in place, which you can call at different times, at different CPMs, and these, like I said, would be layered to your format, device, and geo. Once you've made these clusters of audiences, you've divided these audiences, you figure out the partners, you would set up different flows for each one of them. Now, flow setting is a completely new exercise. It, it's massive. Every product, uh, every demand partner has different capabilities, but let's talk about AdMob. AdMob being the largest demand partner, they've got these really interesting ways to get your optimization done when you're setting up your waterfall. Now, waterfall can be set up in two ways, depending on what product you're using. If you're on AdMob, there's something called Google Optimized, Google Optimized Flows or Manual Flows. Google Optimized Flows means uh, Google dynamically sets the flow based on user geography, the traffic, the historical data. That's what we just spoke about, right? So if you don't want to do that exercise, if you want to keep it supremely simple, just set Google optimized flows and it'll automatically segment it based on the format, device, geos, your audiences, all histories. Great way to do it. But I think it's great when you're getting started. If you're looking at uh, improving the efficiency of your uh, optimization a little further, it's always good to do your own segmentation and figure out what's most important for you. Now, the manual flows is where it comes in handy. So you in a manual flow setting, you can exactly set 
the floor that you're looking at, let's say you set $1 as the floor, that essentially means any advertiser who is saying that I want to buy your inventory for less than a dollar, it's not available, right? And this you can segment by country. This is about AdMob. Now let's talk about if you had Google Ad Manager, for example. Um, Google Ad Manager is a great product. Uh, it's, a, it's an alternate to AdMob. And there are certain little advantages that are there in Google Ad Manager when you're setting up your mediation. In that, it allows you two different kinds of flows. One is called target CPM, and the other is called flow CPM. Now, flow CPM is very similar to similar to manual CPM. You set the flow and you figure out, you tell Google, this is the bare minimum price that I need. But when you set target CPM, target CPM essentially means you tell Google, I need $1 in this inventory. So Google figures out dynamic flows across geographies, across, across devices, across users, across your historical data to figure out how to reach that $1 in ECPM. So it's a great strategy depending on how you want to do it. Uh, this is also a great thing. Another big advantage of Google Ad Manager is actually bid distribution. Essentially, if you think about it, you're basically doing an auction, right? You're getting multiple people to bid for your inventory. Now, imagine if you had the availability of all the data uh, on who is bidding, how much are they bidding for? And then you can accordingly set the price that allows you to get the maximum number of bids. That's a very, very important data set. GAM or Google Ad Manager gives you these bids, the number of bids and the average price of each bid. That allows you to set the right price so that you maximize your inventory. So that's a great strategy, allows you to do it, a beautiful way to do it. Once you've got this in place, you've set your multiple flows. Now Google is going from one partner to the other partner. So you've got, let's say the first partner at $1 at AdMob, the second partner at 90 cents uh, on FAN, the third partner, let's say AppLavin, the fourth partner, uh, let's say Iron Source, right? Mm. Now, one thing which each partner lets you do is do multi-call. That's another very interesting aspect. Uh, that means uh, each partner, and you will have to work with each partner to understand what's legally allowed, but most partners allow you to bid each partner for a same placement multiple times. That allows you to pull multiple requests and multiple times ask them if you if uh, the advertiser or the ad network has demand for the same placement. If you're able to do that, great. That's a great way to get, get your ROI in place. And so always look at multi-call within the same placement. There are two interesting things that also AdMob has launched and a lot of other mediation platform has launched. When you're setting up your waterfall, right? Uh, you basically set up a stack of multiple placements. Now, uh, this is something that uh, Steve, you and I have talked about at multiple times. Uh, when you're looking at an ad network, essentially it's a bunch of people sitting at the other side of the table and they're going out and selling demand, right? There is a seasonality involved. They are going and buying certain kind of inventory. They're selling certain kind of ads. So the CPM fluctuates a lot, right? In the olden times, you would have to actually look at the data regularly, right? You would have to look at maybe set up custom groups and understand how can you understand the seasonality of each player. But Google has come up with this new technique called ANO, uh, Ad Network Optimization. What that basically allows you to do is it sets you real-time eCPM. So if there is a fluctuation in eCPM in a partner, it automatically switches the priority. So your waterfall can automatically switch the priority on whichever partner is giving you a higher CPM. And that allows you to further increase the efficiency. Now, this was one very old or actually the first type of mediation that has existed. Now, let's talk about the next, next step that uh, mediation evolved into. Head of bidding. It is also important to understand why that happened. Now, uh, think about what I've just told you. Uh, essentially, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting up a waterfall, right? That means a step-by-step -step process of about seven to eight partners where your app is hitting each partner and asking for a certain ad at a certain price point. And if it's not available, it goes to the next partner. Now, once people set this up by geography, by format, by devices, they realize the number of partners that they have to hit to get the right CPM increased. And what that increases is the latency of the ad, right? What that essentially means is you ask for an ad and it's taking time to ask for, e for each partner to come and return and tell you if there is an ad. Only if one partner says no, then it goes to the other, the other ad network. So it's extremely important that you do it in as many, as less partners as possible. So it became really important and it uh, essentially limited the number of partners you can work with. This affected your show rate. And this affected the number of partners you can work with. That led to open bidding or header bidding. Now, what is header bidding or what is open bidding? Essentially, that means it's a live auction. It's a live auction where you're telling everybody, guys, I've got this ad demand, now come. 
you bet live and tell me how many how much price you're willing to do and whoever's get the best price you come and auction right now you give me that placement so that means if there are five people five ad network sitting here right now i would tell them this this is my inventory tell me what's the best price if for example if steve is an ad network and you're telling uh, you're uh, bidding for my inventory for 1 uh, let's say there is another steve 2 who's doing for 2 dollars automatically i give it to steve 2 then to steve 1 that's the way open bidding works open bidding has massive advantages beyond just a latency avoidance a couple of more when you look at uh, mediation waterfall the problem is you've got to integrate a lot of ad networks you've got to integrate a lot of their sdks with open bidding uh, you can avoid that uh, a lot of the sdks are not required they are server level uh, integrations that prevent you from adding a lot of sdks and in a lot of cases your app becomes more bulky you end up having more crashes you've got to have a bigger integration team to ensure that they support all kinds of integration you've got to keep a track of all updates on all sdks what's not working so it becomes really cumbersome so to reduce all that integration effort uh, they've they've done open bidding that's a very very big advantage the second thing is latency like i said latency is avoided to a great extent you can now hit 10 partners at the same time 15 partners 20 partners at the same time in the stack and ask them for the right price you don't have to worry about improving the changing the stack uh, reducing the number of partners worrying about latency because it is parallel bidding so uh, there is no effect on latency the third thing i think which is specifically to google and i don't know about other uh, mediation partners is actually payments right uh, when you do mediation you essentially means you are actually building a relationship with each of these individual ad networks for payment collection a lot of developers i work with always have cash flow issues it's a concern that a lot of developers work with so every every ad network follows a different payment cycle you've got to chase with them the one or two partners where you never have a problem with is with google and facebook right so imagine google is taking away your headache completely and saying guys we will manage your entire payment cycle we will pay you on the 21st of each month and we will do all the subjugation with all the partners to ensure we manage all your payments and we collect it on your behalf and pay you right the fourth advantage is actually data accuracy when you were doing mediation there was always a, a, an issue with the data that was shown on the mediation platform as well as the original platform so a lot of times for example if you're running app love and mediation or iron source or inmobi the numbers that were shown on the inmobi dashboard would not match on the mediation platform that is eliminated through open bidding and header bidding right so that's a great way uh, solves a lot of problems right this is the second evolution now let's talk about what's in the future now once you understood both these strategies people always come up with a bias that one is better than the other but the world that is moving today is actually moving towards a hybrid strategy that allows you to actually use both strategies in place and work in conjugation to be able to do it the advantage there is there are certain partners that do really really well on header bidding and open bidding and you can subjugate certain demands certain inventories certain supplies there and the rest of the inventory you can actually do it in the mediation stack it. That was phenomenal content. I think the one thing I want to make sure the audience leaves with is, look, you can apply any of these strategies to any mediation platform. But what Sid was breaking down was, look, there's benefits to just using AdMob's mediation because of the pay, the payouts, like everything you can set in within AdMob too. And so you have access to not only AdMob's inventory, but all the ad networks and you get paid on time. That's one of the biggest difficulties because you're running UA, you're spending that money and you got to wait X amount of days to get paid. And there's that gap. That's where developers really struggle is that gap between you dishing out the Facebook, you know, the iron source, the money to run the ads and drive the users and then to wait to get the money back from the ads itself. So that's what we talked about. So it can apply to any mediation platform, but AdMob is the one that we're recommending. Sid. Thank you so much for doing this. Is there anything else that you want to mention before we say goodbye? More than happy. Uh, again, like I said, mediation is a really important strategy. I think you guys uh, focus on the hybrid strategy. If you'd like to know more, you can reach out to Abroda and we can help you design your entire habit strategy and how to move forward. If you're just curious about how to increase your revenues through ads, I recommend go checking out Abroda. I trusted, we've done a ton of videos together and they're going to really just help you out if they can if you can if you want to work with them, go ahead and do that, but they're going to really help you out as well. And they have the strategies to really increase. It isn't just about these things that we talked about. It's just within your app. How do you 
incorporate ads more into the app and then make more. So once again, it is at Broda.com. Sid, thank you so much for coming on and doing this again, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.